Hello and welcome to a, another episode in a series that I'm going to call Single Systems. This is going to be a series that talks about how to do certain systems in Bevy in sort of a like how you would make like a single system do it as opposed to a larger like implementation that takes in like actual architectural design. So for this episode, I'm going to be showing you how you would create a flycam, like the Bevy flycam. I'm actually going to be using the code from the Bevy flycam to show this off. And this video is seen uh, more as an example of what you need if you want to implement your own flycam. Since if you're just using a simple debug flycam, I would recommend using the Bevy flycam, which you'll find a link to in the description. But if you want to implement one yourself or customize the baby fly cam, it is useful to know why you have to do certain things in order to get the functionality of a fly cam. So jumping into the code, the first thing that you'll need is an input state. This tracks the pitch and yaw of the character, which has to be done independently of the transform since we need to know how much the camera pitches and then yours and this will become more apparent later when I explain how we have to apply the pitch and yaw to the transform. They've also split out the uh, render movements, which is just a raw event reader of the mouse movements. I believe this is so that the camera plugin can run in parallel to other systems, since uh, with Bevy, if you have an event reader, it has mutable access to the events, so we'll lock out other systems. But I'm not entirely sure on that. I just believe that's what they're doing. Then we have the mouse settings, which is sensitivity and speed. Obviously, the speed is how fast the character moves, and the sensitivity is how much the player's mouse movements respond in terms of uh, radions that the camera moves. So you'll notice here that sensitivity is really small. It's because the mouse movements are measured in pixels, and the rotation is moved, uh, measured in radions, which is a, you know, got a horrible translation ratio, which means that because there's lots of pixels to do a full lap of the screen, we want a small conversion ratio. And then the speed of 12 just means that you'll move like 12 units a second. They've also got a marker component so that you can flag which camera gets the fly cam as opposed to just moving all the cameras because that's not necessarily desirable. Onto the first system that they have, and this is a good system to know, but not entirely necessary for fly cams, is to toggle the camera grab. So it takes in a window, looks at the current grab mode of the window, and it'll set it to confined if it is none, and none if it's anything else. And this basically means that when you're in fly cam mode, the camera uh, moves around with the mouse, which means you don't want the mouse to be able to leave the confines of the screen. So that's what this does, is just sets whether the mouse is free or not, and they um, change this based on when you hit escape, it'll free your mouse. And you... So the one thing that they've done here that's useful for fly cams, but again, sort of a personal preference thing, maybe one of the things you might want to customize away out of the baby fly cam, is that by default, it will grab your cursor. So this is a startup system that just calls the toggle cursor and passes at the primary window if there is one, otherwise it just warns you you don't have a primary window and so can't really use the fly cam. So the setup player will just spawn a player with, or a camera at a slight offset with a fly cam. This is used because the uh, there is two plugins that the fly cam grants you, one that lets it set up the camera and one that lets you set up the camera. Onto the actual system. So this is the moving the player fly cam system. This system takes in the user's input and will move the camera respectively, but won't rotate it. It'll just move the camera's transform. So we obviously take in the input key codes, the time so that we can have our movement be frame time independent. We need to grab the primary window so that we can detect if the cursor is locked or not. And then we also want the camera movement settings and access to the transform on the camera. So the first thing we do is unwrap the primary camera. And again, so if there is no primary camera, we will just say you can't use the fly cam. Then we go through each transform that has a fly cam attached to it and run this code. So we obviously set the uh, velocity to none, which uh, in some cases might be called delta. This is the amount that the camera will move. We set the local Z equal to transforms local Z. This is 
so that uh, when we press forward, we actually move in the forward direction as opposed to the um, like forward uh, relative to the world. So forward in the case of Bevy, I believe is plus Z direction. So if we can uh, turn our camera 180 degrees and press forward, we actually wanna be going negative in Bevy's world space as opposed to positive. So we calculate the local Z, which takes in rotation. Then we grab the local X and the local Z to create a new vector pointing forward. We grab our right, which is I guess, Z and negative X. So again, this is just calculating which way is forward and which way is to our right. And we then work out our key presses based on these positions. So then for each key that's been pressed, we match that and apply the correct velocity. So if the um, cursor grab mode is none, we don't match any keys. Anything other than none, we match the key. Uh, so if you press W, we get the velocity and we add forward. If you press S, we grab the velocity and subtract forward. Um, A will subtract right, D will add right, space will go up in the Y and shift will go down in the Y. So this is where if you were making your own, you could customize your own movements. You could pull in the leaf wing plugin to, in order to um, allow for more customizable movements in that you can have um, like fly up, fly down, rather than having to have key code bindings, you could have controller bindings and all that added, which I might actually do after this video is go in and make a pull request to add like Leafwing Studio. Then you velocity normalize or zero. So this sets the velocity so that it's, we're sort of picking a direction rather than a um, movement, which means that if you press forward and left, you will move uh, at movement speed at 45 degree angle, rather than at um, the square root of two speed at that 45 degree angle, because it added the two vectors together in order to get a 40, get the 45. We need to normalize that back to one. Then we say transform.translation is equal to the velocity times the, um, the frame time times the uh, speed in the settings. And this will basically make the character move around in the direction that the camera is facing as being forward. This allows you to uh, actually move pointing your camera. Anyone that's tried to implement a camera themselves has probably forgot to do the um, local Z section of this and resulted in a camera that goes forward uh, Z wise, even when you're looking to the left, which can be really confusing to operate. The next is the player look function. This is the uh, really interesting function because it takes in stuff that you may not know about rotation to be able to implement. So it's one of those things that you don't know how to do this. It's almost certainly going to turn to a Google search that you're going to have to do. So pay close attention to this one. So we, again, we take in the settings and the primary window, the input state, which uh, the camera's rotation, basically. Mouse movements and a query for the transform again. So just the same stuff really as the last one, except mouse movements instead of uh, keyboard inputs. So we then, again, check that we have a primary window. Then we get our settings out and iterate through each transform applying the settings. So for each event, we read it into the event reader uh, this is again, usually you would have to say mute um, event reader to do this. So instead they've split that out. So for each event, we match the event and we say the, the windows scale is equal to the window height minimum window, which as they have in this helpful comment is about making sure that your left, right sensitivity is the same as your up, down sensitivity. So it takes the smaller of the two windows and uses that. Then we say that the, the pitch is equal to the sensitivity times the events delta y times by the window scale to radians, and that the yaw is equal to um, minus equals the sensitivity times the delta x times the radian. So the event that's returned by mouse movement is the delta vector 2 of the xy movement of the mouse in pixels, I believe. This then converts to radians and puts it back into the pitch. So we, I don't know why we subtract instead of adding, but I think that's uh, to do with the delta and making sure that the mouse is equal. So if you wanted to invert the mouse, as some people do, uh, you would put a, a negative delta y or make this a positive so that the y direction is inverted. 
So then we say that the delta pitch is equal to the um, delta state pitch clamped to negative 1.54 to 1.54. This means that it's impossible for the camera to do 360s looking up and down, only uh, horizontally can you do 360. Since if you point negative 90 degrees down, which is your negative 1.45 radians, or 90 degrees up, you won't be able to look any further back than that because you'll keep getting clamped. This just stops the camera from spinning indefinitely so you can't just keep looking up this is the important ordering of math that i'm talking about is we need to make sure that we apply the um yaw and then the pitch since if you apply the pitch and then the yaw you can end up with the camera rolling as you uh turn the camera uh hopefully when I'm editing this, I will insert clips from the game when you're pitching your flipped, and you'll see how, like, you as you, um, if you you're with a pitch of zero, it's all normal. But if you like pitch to forty five degrees and then you're you'll spin rather than um, turn, which is fun. So yeah, then we have our grab cursor toggle, which is a lovely concise system that just says if they pressed escape, toggle the window. So you can toggle in and out when you press escape. Then they have two plugins that the only real difference between them is one sets up the camera, the uh, other one doesn't, it expects you to do that. It initializes the mouse settings and the input state. So that's all you really need to set up your own uh, custom fly cam. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, leave them in the description and I'll try to answer them. And don't forget, I also forgot to mention if you want to see any other specific systems, Leave them in the description and I will go through and make videos on those kinds of systems. Or if you have a specific plugin that you want me to do this kind of breakdown of why they've done what, then also leave that in the description. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more single systems. And I will see you then.